I just found out that one of my best friends from college is about to have his first kid. So to surprise him, I decided to make a baby sign with his baby's name on it and give it to him as a gift. This video is going to discuss the steps that I took from design to G-code creation and how I use that G-code with my CNC machine to make a final product. I hope you enjoy the video. Before you can start making any G-code, which is the code that your CNC machine uses to cut anything out, you need to have a vector file image of what you want to cut out. So you can't just go into paint and draw some lines and then use it to create any sort of G-code. You need to have your initial design done in a .svg file or a vector file. This is the same type of file that PDF viewers or writers use. A vector file basically represents any shape as a whole bunch of line segments. So even a curve, if you zoom in close enough to that curve, would be a whole bunch of different line segments put together. To make my vector files, I use Inkscape. It's an open source free software online and I use it to make all the vector files I need before I take them and start making G-code. So this is an example of something that you can do with Inkscape. It's pretty easy to use, not too terribly hard. There's a lot of tutorials online for you to use it as well. So it's a good little tool to have in your toolbox. Now that my vector file is created, I can actually start making G-code. To make G-code, I use MakerCam.com. It's a free online software and it takes any SVG file and turns it into G-code and lets you manipulate toolpaths and add tabs. It's, it's a great online tool that you can use and it works for any type of CNC machine. So the first thing I do when I get into MakerCam is I make sure that my measurement is set to inches and then after that you upload your SVG file and as you can see here this is the SVG file we were looking at earlier. Now you always want to remember which direction your uh, origin is, which is the cross in the middle of the screen. So since the origin is at the bottom left-ish of the screen, I need to take into account that my machine is the longest on its y-axis. So I need to flip my design by 90 degrees to make it fit. After that, I need to scale it properly to the size I want it to be. So right now it's too small. I've upsized it by 250% and as you can see here I'm putting it on the positive X and positive Y axis so that cross on the left where my mouse is is the origin and this is showing that my machine's going to be cutting positive on the X axis and positive on the Y axis the next step is to start determining your tool paths so first I'm going to select the exterior of all of the letters after I select the exterior of the letters, I'm going to go and create a profile operation. And here I need to set my tool diameter to the diameter of the bit I'm going to be using in my router. And I need to set the target depth a little bit deeper than the material I'm going to be using to cut on. And then I always click an outside cut because these are the exterior parts of the letter and you don't want to cut inside of these lines because it will make all of your letters a little bit more narrow than you want. Now I'm going around and I'm selecting the inside of the letters. And then I'm going to do another profile cut, changing the dip depths and the width of the bit, the same as I did before. Here I'm going to change things up a bit and go on an inside cut because I want to make sure that all of the letters have the correct thickness to them and I'd rather cut inside the line on the interior of the letters than outside so that there's not just thin spots all over in the lettering. And then last but not least I'm cutting the dot of the eye. So next I always open up all of the tool paths I've already created and double check all of my depths. I double check my tool widths and I double check if they're supposed to be inside or outside profile cuts. This is just something that I've, I've taught myself to do after messing this up. It's really easy to forget to change one of those numbers whenever you're flying through the process. Now that we've checked everything, I'm going to calculate all of the toolpaths. And what that does is MakerCam 
takes all of your cam decisions and actually calculates the G code. So your G code is now calculated. Um, and then after the G code's calculated, you can go back and add tabs. And all the tabs do is keep the wood in place as I'm as the project's being cut out. So what you're seeing here is me actually moving around the tabs in MakerCam and determining where I want those tabs to be. So once I'm happy with the tab locations, it's time to export the G code. As you can see here, I'm going to actually export each one of these profile operations individually and I label the operations in which order I want to do them. Also at the end of each operation, I put the tool bit size that I need to use for it. It's easier to remember which bit goes with which operation if you actually put the bit type into the file name. The last step that I like to take before taking my G-code to my machine is to open it up into a cam simulation software called Camotics. This just lets me see what the G-code is going to look like and how it's going to cut on the machine. It's just a quick little tool to make sure that I didn't miss anything big. Now on to the machine. When placing stock material on your CNC, you need to make sure that you have it in the correct orientation. You need to make sure that it is parallel and perpendicular to the correct axis. So here I am placing my router down and I'm placing the edge of the material directly next to my router bit and I am clamping it down. I lift my router directly up and I move it backwards on the y-axis without moving the x-axis and I do this so that I can tell where my y-axis is on the far side of the board and then I can move the board over to the proper location and clamp it down and I know that now the stock material is directly parallel with my y-axis and if it's parallel with my y-axis it is then perpendicular enough for my x-axis. Here I'm marking my origin with a red pen the origin is where I start my first operation and then I return home to and start each subsequent operation. If the operation does not start from the home position, it will not be at the correct location on my stock material. Universal G-Code Sender has a slick feature that allows you to visualize what the cut's going to look like before you do anything. So it's kind of like the Camotics, but it's local directly on your Universal G-Code Sender. And I always do this one last step just to ensure I've got everything right before I start cutting. Once my G-Code's set, I can go and connect to my CNC machine. After I connect to my CNC, I like to go to Manual Control and bump my Y-axis just to ensure my CNC machine moves when it's told to. This is a sped up video of the first operation. Unfortunately, my GoPro stopped working halfway through the cut, but you get a good idea of what's going on. This is a sped up video of the final two operations of the job. As you can see, the router is bouncing up and down quite rapidly in this sped up video. And that just shows that the CNC machine is leaving the tabs in, which is keeping the material together as it cuts. And this is the end product. I think it turned out pretty good. I'm very happy with how it looks. I put the piece of wood up against the light like this so everyone could see how the tabs are still in there holding everything together. Um, it really turned out pretty good. I really hope they like it. Thank you very much for watching.